Hello everyone, welcome to the conclusion of day one's AutoCAD 30 day challenge. So this part is sort of the solution and the discussion on how we created this little exercise and to give you some sort of tips, maybe you might have struggled in a certain area. If you did struggle any bits, make sure you let us know, comment sections open below for you to um, have some, um, yeah, give us some feedback and we can obviously have a, have a conversation via the platform. So. Obviously, overall, this is one big sort of rectangle, um, which is given us with some key dimensions of 230 by 150. Hopefully, you've worked out that there's a datum point which we've put in the left-hand side down here, and all our key dimensions all come from this left-hand space. So, how would we sort of tackle this? Well, it's about splitting this drawing down into individualized com components overall we have one long rectangle okay which we know is going to be 230 by 150 okay i'm going to do a basically what we call the rec tool on autocad which is the shortcut key or the hot key for a rectangle so we're going to click in one area or we're going to put some key dimensions in one area and we're going to tell autocad the top right hand lo 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 location so this is in code form Okay, my bottom left, which is this one, will be 0, 0, my top right up here, which will then be 230 by 150. Okay, it's the X coordinate followed by the Y along the corridor and up the stairs back in the school terminology. So that's sort of for me, that's step number one. Okay, it's a good sort of step. Get our external boundaries in. Next step is sort of entirely up to, up, up, up into your choice. Some people will choose to put, put the slots in first because they are another rectangle or the two lines. Okay, some people might want to work on the circles. For me, I'm already in the rectangle command. Okay, or you could actually use the line tool for this if you so wish. So we have our rectangle now. Okay, we have our key slots that the first line needs to go from 50. Okay. On the, on the zero line so this is going to be 50 comma zero okay all the way up then to the top which will then be the same again 50 comma 150 so obviously the y this time is, is 150 then you can obviously put in your other line which will then obviously be the coordinates of 100 comma zero and 100 comma 150 and so on and so forth and then you can put in like the next one which is then going to be 130 so the first line, okay. Then from that, then we're adding 50 to that to that line. So we're going to look at a total then of 180. So that gives us then the two slots, and you can either use the rec command or or the actual line 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 command there. Next then, this is my third stage, is to put in my circles okay now my circle I'm going to code as number one and I'm going to code this one as number two so circle number one okay that has a center point of x 25 y 35 so again going to choose the circle which is again it's the hot key of C and remember that on AutoCAD it defaults the radius so you're just going to pop in 12 okay so we click our center point use the keyboard Type in 12, that's our first location. That's location is obviously we need to put in this center point, which we know is 205 on the X, okay, and 35 um, from the Y. But obviously this this time the 35 is referenced from the 150 line. So why again, same same um, use is that we're using the hot the hot key or C on the command bar, or we can actually relatively click. Um, circle and then we're going to drive to our locations remember this one's also radius 12 the fourth and last stage okay is then putting in our center lines uh, and again you can either find the center points you know we use in mass or we can actually just use the center tool um, which is located in the annotation tab um, like so so that's the explanation now I'm going to show you in practice so I've laid up AutoCAD, um, like I said in the introduction, I use 2021, because um, that's the latest version um, 
to come through. I know that AutoCAD 2022 has had some excellent reviews, so you might have a look on YouTube about that, but I'm not at the stage where I need to update to 2022 yet. So I have a template um, for my files, which puts everything in, in on the same output. So I'm going to choose my template, okay, which then loads into the AutoCAD space. When I go into my um, A3 landscape, okay, what you guys see um, when you download the drawing is this this exact template. So if you don't actually know how to to use AutoCAD and build a title block and a page border, okay, I'll put a link um, above and in and in the description how you can build those tools. So if you've never used AutoCAD before, okay, predominantly this is the top toolbar, okay, and it has everything split into, into sections. We have a little draw bar, okay, with, with tools, and then there's further tools in the drop down. Okay, we have a modified section, we have a modify annotation. We have something called layers where we can use different layer states to turn on and off different views. Okay, then we have the block editing tools, properties, and then I've got a couple of extra ones like grouping, utilities about measuring without it being permanent, and like copy paste and then my views. Again, then we have a, a top tab which got all our insert commands, annotate commands, so annotate obviously like when we're creating center lines and center marks and some dimensioning. Okay, then we have parametric views and it goes on and then to discuss outputs and then add-ins. So again, if you're not familiar, I'll also put a link in for this video which does an in-depth discussion. So I'm gonna start off by drawing in layers. So comp Predominantly I used um, different layers. So I use a drawing layer, dimension layer, I use a vision just for sort of offset stuff for like um, any kind of like pitch circle diameters or any reference and I don't need to be as part of the main drawing. Okay, and then I have a construction where I drew a lot of um, my construction lines to help me draw the geometry that I need. Again, if you have a look at that video about explaining page setups and title blocks, I go through layer properties as well. Again, I'll put the link down below. So I'm going to choose my construction layer, my construction layer is active because it's in my top toolbar. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by fundamentally drawing um, the limits that I need to sort of use. So I'm outputting um, all my drawings um, to A3, so I'm just going to put the limits of A3, which is um, 0, 0, so from this mark down here. And the A3 landscape, so 420 millimeters by 297. Okay, now I'm going to use the rep tool, or I can click on the two point rectangle up here. Okay, I'm going to come into my 0, 0 locations. So I'm just literally pressing on the keyboard 0, comma, button 0. Okay, I'm going to place my A3 page, so 420, 297. That's my limits of A3. One thing to remember is always draw in one to one in AutoCAD and let your page set up on your view zoom in um, to set a scale rather than drawing everything to scale it within the model zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the annotate tool, pop in the center line so I know where my center parts are. So I'm just clicking top and bottom of my lines here okay, to get a center point which I can then zoom and move around. So that's going to be my center zone. So I kind of know that as long as I draw roughly in the center, it'll be the center of my page. Now, because I'm outputting on to A4, I'm not actually going to output with my drawing here. I could actually pop it in um, anywhere within that block. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm doing is going to pick a starting point. I'm going to start here. Okay, and I'm going to bring it up. So we know that the key dimensions are 150 on the width, okay, and then are 230 across the top. So 230 by 150, those are the key dimensions I need to put in. So I'm going to put 230, 150, okay. That's my limits there. Then what I can do if I, if I really want to is I could actually move that into the center of my page just using the M key or the move command and specify the center to center, like so. Okay, that's my outer. I'm actually going to change that into my drawing. Okay, so that's actually part of my frame. Now I'm going to do some more um, kind of drawing in. I'm here, and I'm literally going to come along and replace my um, little slot. So I know that they were 50, so what I'm going to do is going to put a construction point in 
um, where I can draw a line that's going to be 50. Now I could either draw along the bottom, type in 50, and I have a, a fixed point to come up, like so. Or I could use the offset command, okay, and then place some dimensions that way. So I need to put, I know it's going to be 50, okay, if I look back at my drawing here, I've got another offset of 30. Okay, so escape to cancel the command, space to reload the previous one, 3, 0, like so, and then 50 in again, like so. So those, those are my bars, and what I could do is have a draw a rectangle around them, because I have two points. Okay, make sure you're in the right layer. Or I could just copy over those lines, or I could just select both lines and actually change them on, on, on the layer. There's loads of different ways you can do the same thing on, on AutoCAD. So there we go, there's my outer rectangle, my two slots through. Obviously I could actually just delete that one now, or actually when I turn off my construction layer, it would dis disappear anyway. So, we just need to put in the circles, so it's 35 by 25, okay. Quite simply is, I'm just gonna do offset 35 from that line coming up. Okay, I'm gonna have to just gonna draw a small construction line now just to enable me to find that center point. So offset 25, come across. There's my center point for that circle. I can now also do the same up the top. Okay, I know there's gonna be a set point coming down. So I just wanna pick a point where they're gonna align. So I'm gonna offset again. This time 35, that's from that top location coming down. Okay, now I have actually chosen that on the wrong side, so I can actually move it across to a point and make my line a little bit longer. Offset, I think it's 205, yeah, 205. Okay, so now I know if I just extend that line outwards. If you click on any line, click on the boxes, you can move them or extend them or stretch them. That's the second crossover point for my circles. So in the drawing layer, okay, I'm going to come up, circle radius, click on my center point, pop in 12, okay, circle on the other side, circle radius, pop in 12, like so. Now I'm just going to turn off my construction layers, okay. Now I'm going to come into my annotation layers, and again, I can just use my center mark, okay, maybe let's do it under dimensions tab so you can turn it on and off all together okay top line bottom line okay just move it to the extremes of my shape okay left and right also available there as well I can come in and also press the center mark okay and put in the center for my um, circles Okay, last off then, I want to use either the dimensions on the home page or on the annotation page. Entirely up to you. You can come along and measure the appropriate dimensions. Now, what's nice is you can always, if you pop in some, if I pop 15 in here, it will set it to 15 mil away. It makes everything nice and um, uniform, which is always good. So coming on this side, pop in 15 again, put some 15 mil away. And we can come in and put the key dimensions for our slots. Okay, this time if you already have one, you can line them up manually. And just keep pressing the space bar using my mouse to line everything up very nicely. Okay, like so. Then you might want to come in and say, I want to dimension the circle. Now, most people come into the center and then come out to the point that you want, like so. But you get this very long trail, which is not very great sort of practice. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually turn my construction lines back on. Okay, and I'm actually going to do it up the top. So I'm going to choose this line here, my construction line, bang on 25. Okay, if you noticed before, it said 24.97. It, it locked onto something else rather than just getting the right point. Same again, running down, just going to choose the two, okay, output, like so. It just makes it nice and neat rather than having these trailing dimensions everywhere. Same again, 35. 
like so. And that's it. Turn off your construction layer. There's your first challenge completed. All I'm going to do now is just go to my output. Okay. Again, if you haven't done this, done this before, I'm just going to set to one to one. Check out the other video. Okay, I'm going to line it in the center of my template and very simply I'm going to plot it or output it to a PDF so I have my PDF settings there A3 I've done a window um, layout so again you just want to plop, plop in the window so you put down the key limits of your border okay just do a quick preview make sure everything's in scope which it is okay and then you can plot and save it to a, a location or is it all printed out entirely up to your choice so I'm just going to save mine to my desktop um, so I'm going to call it challenge. Turn J1, save it. Okay, that'll go through the output stage, and then there we go. So there is my completed drawing. Over there, PDF like split in 90 degrees. Okay, of all those parts. So, well done, and um, look forward to sharing you the second one tomorrow. So if you did it any differently, um, you know, please feel free to comment. And um, maybe you did a different, different, different approach. Let let me know.